please stand and Kelly will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will all the gentlemen please remove your hats? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mayor Rowe. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Present. Councilman Racy. Here. Councilman Porter. Here. Councilman Sanders. Present. Councilman Gabriel. Um, I says. will entertain a motion to excuse Councilman Gabriel. He is out of town for uh, family reasons. Move to approve. Um, Excusing his absence. Okay. Is there support? Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And Councilman Webster. Present. Okay. You do have a quorum with six members present. The first item is item one. Approve the agenda. Move to approve. Is there support? Support been moved and supported all in favor aye, aye. opposed the motion carries item 2 city council minutes item 2a are the regular meeting minutes of september 5th Move approval support it's been moved by councilman sanders supported by um, councilman porter all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed yes Madam Mayor, would you inquire of the city attorney if you and the council members violated the Open Meetings Act by exiting to a closed room where a quorum of council were present at the September 5th, 2017 council meeting? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blackwell. Uh, the city attorney, if you'll make note, please, and have a report at the next council meeting. I will, Mayor. Thank you. Item three is presentations. Item three A is a presentation by Maxwell Cameron of Wayne Main Street. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. My name is Maxwell Cameron. I'm the executive director of Wayne Main Street. And uh, we're here tonight to share a little bit of, of good news on a funding opportunity that we received. Uh, our organization was recently awarded uh, a grant from AARP in the amount of $6,775, uh, specifically for um, some improvements to Derby's Alley, namely the installation of seating, as well as uh, to produce programming uh, aimed at uh, uh, all ages in our community uh, uh, health and wellness sessions. So uh, we're really proud at, at, of uh, sharing, uh, to share this additional uh, funding opportunity with you tonight. Um, it uh, goes a long way to helping us realize our goal of uh, building a, a community gathering space in, in Derby's Alley. And uh, we especially want to thank uh, Lisa Nasserina, Nasserini, our city manager. Uh, you know, Lisa brought this opportunity to our organization and um, helped with the application and uh, was really instrumental in, um, in helping us uh, uh, achieve this funding opportunity. So special thank you to Lisa and the, uh, the other staff of the uh, city of Wayne. Um, I'm also really happy to share with you that uh, late last week, we got a call uh, on Friday from AARP telling us how much they loved our project. And uh, in addition to funding us, they also uh, wanted to shoot video uh, of the construction and, and the wellness programs, uh, which we'll talk about a, a little a bit later in the agenda. Um, so we expect actually to, for a film crew to come out from, from AARP and, and use our project in their promotional pieces. So I think that's uh, a, a really great thing for the city of Wayne and, and, and showing what we're, we're doing here uh, to improve our downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Maxwell. And I think you had a very successful citywide cleanup. The 
The next item is item 4, requests. Item 4A is a request from the Wayne Main Street to use the city property at 35005 Michigan Avenue West, which is known as Derby's Alley, for outdoor exercise classes throughout the month of October. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Reza, supported by Councilman Sanders. All in favor? Or any Aye. discussion, I'm sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 5 is appointments of boards, commissions, and committees. Item 5A is to approve the reappointment of Christine Garcia to the LOCC, the Local Officers' Compensation Commission, until October 2024. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Miller, for the reappointment of Christine Garcia. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6 is communications and reports. Item 6A uh, is the Historical Society Upcoming Events. Ann Zimmerman. Good evening, Mayor Rowe Good evening. and Council Members. And Mayor Rowe, I want to thank you for <coughs> announcing our agenda last month oh, for Historical Society events. We had a great turnout for the Stinson program at the library. It was very well attended. But right now I want to mention that we're having our fourth annual cemetery walk at St. Mary's Cemetery October 1st, Sunday, from 1 to 3. This is a open event for all family members to come with their kids and neighbors. It's an historical event. We're going to be learning about the different people that are buried at St. Mary's Cemetery and a little bit about the history of that area. <laughs> Some of the people we're going to be talking about, Charles Kerr, who was a civil, uh, World War I veteran, um, Wayne's midwife, Emily Dowdell, <laughs> farm families, and this is going to be Anna Freshman, and founding families of St. Mary's, we have Jeremiah O'Connor, the, the Cullens, and Pat Cullen was a city manager. We are going to be talking about his dad, Roger T. Cullen, and the Cullen, how they came to Wayne and their history. And some Civil War soldiers and retail businessmen, W.L. Gates, Jack O'Brien, and the William Mulholland Jr. So those are the people we'll be talking about. You don't need a ticket to come to the cemetery walk. You just show up. We'll put you with groups. We'll take you around. We're not going to allow parking in the cemetery. The police have given us permission to park on Josephine Street on the parkway, which is just a short distance east of the main entrance. Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll have cider and donuts. <coughs> and it'll just be an interesting historical event. So please invite your friends and neighbors it's October 1st on Sunday and then October 7th we are going to be joining uh, the helium they're going to have a flea market in their parking lot we're going to be having some of our items that were donated for our silent auction these are items that were privately donated by people so we're going to have a garage sale we'll have some of our store items from the museum we have new shirts we have other new items so that's October 7th it's a Saturday in the parking lot behind helium studio from 10 to 4 p.m. October 12th is going to be our next presentation and that's going to be at the museum it's a Thursday We'll have Tyler Mall is going to be talking. Uh, it'll be like the fourth part of our transportation series. It'll, he'll, be, he'll be talking about the Bendix Corporation, Garwood, and Lincoln Motors. So it's going to be very good. Tyler's doing a wonderful job. October 28th, we are going to have, it's a Saturday right before Halloween. We're going to be having a Halloween party at the museum between 2 and 4 p.m., it's a family party for adults and kids. We're charging $2 per family. There'll be games and treats, crafts. It'll just be a fun event. And we are partnering up with the Congregational Church for this. Oh. So it's, we'll have a good volunteer base, and everybody's excited. So please invite your family and friends. And I want to take thank um, Maxwell because we were part of the cleanup. We had uh, some volunteers from Main Street and we did a lot of work around the museum grounds. We moved some plants around. We trimmed some of the trees. Uh, the Wayne Garden Club with Jones, Joe Suda planted some new hydrangeas and roses. So it kind of 
really makes the whole building look better and you really in appreciate the architecture of that beautiful mm -hmm. museum. So if there's any questions about anything, I just want to thank everybody for letting me talk tonight. Thank you very much, Ann. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <coughs> Item 6. Item 6B is a communication from the Senior Services Director regarding a grant increase from the Senior Alliance. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Good evening. Um, we had, I received an offer from Senior Alliance. We have a Senior Center staffing grant, and they had some additional funding. So I did apply for it and did receive it. So we received $2,633 more dollars added to our former 5444 So um, it's not a whole lot, but every penny helps. And with the limited hours, sometimes we I can't go for a lot of money because of the matching, et cetera. But I am very thrilled to, know, to let you know that we did get that. It is retro back to their fiscal year, which is current. So I, were, I was able to go back to October 1st of last year and have to use it up by September 30th of this year. So I just have to go back and do the reports for that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor mm -hmm. may I ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nancy. Can you tell me um, with these uh, funds, what would that help sustain? Uh, with what Senior center staffing only funds a person in the office to do programming. So it's to help cities be able to keep staff on, and I am the only staff. So it funds some of my, my wages so that I'm able to have programming for the seniors. Okay. So. Does it assist in any of the programs that you are trying to provide? Any programs that I do account for the hours I spent for this grant. Okay, thank so. you. Mm -hmm. The next item is for Nancy again, item 6C, communications regarding upcoming senior events. I just want to remind everybody of some of the great programs that we do offer. We do have a free 15-minute legal consultation that is offered through the Bond Associates. Um, it is September 21st. You do have to have an appointment. It really is just an opportunity to spend 15 minutes and ask an attorney a question. A lot of people do not have an attorney you know, accessible and they don't want to spend the money. So this gives you a chance to at least get some direction um, if you have an issue. Uh, we also on Wednesday, September 27th at 1 o'clock, I have the Elder Law and Advocacy Center of Neighborhood Legal Services coming. This is a presentation. It starts at 1 o'clock. You can walk in. We'd prefer um, pre-reservation so we know how many people to expect. But they will cover wills, trust, uh, nursing homes, Medicare, Medicaid. You sit through the program. Afterwards, you can ask questions. If you have some personal stuff you would like done, like... Um, say you need to update your will or something like that you can talk to the attorney after the presentation they will make arrangements to do um, the update for you it is all free you just have to be at least 60 years of age and a wayne county resident so if you're interested please call me on that i'll give you the number and stuff at the end um, the next thing is um, i know it was mentioned already but i want to remind everybody that the commission on aging has a program called diamond of the community this year's recipient is Mrs. Pat Rice. The dinner in her honor will be Tuesday, October 3rd at 6 o'clock. It is done at the Hype Recreation Center. She'll be given a plaque and a monetary gift from our sponsors, which is the Wayne Dairy Queen. We will have dinner. Um, we usually have somebody from the Wayne County com uh, Commissioners come, somebody from the Executive's Office, somebody from the State come, do presentations to Pat, and then afterwards we will come here where Mayor and Council will then present her with the City Resolution. Tickets are $15. They can be bought here either at City Hall or at my office, which is at Hype Recreation. In the event you come during my um, closed hours, you can talk to somebody at the front desk at Hype and they will help it out so you don't have to make a second trip. So they're very helpful in doing that. Um, I have another program coming up that is done through the uh, State Bar of Michigan. It's called Who, Who Should You Trust? Um, it is important information for seniors. They talk about um, all the scams that go on, who you should be being careful when. You know, a lot of people will see things in the mail, will come for dinner, 
and we'll, you have a free dinner and we'll do this this and this a lot of that is to get you in the door to be able to get you sign up for something it's not always the best way to go so if you're interested in that please let me know it is wednesday october 11th at one o'clock again just give my office a call um, my office as i said is located in hype recreation you would call 734-721-7460 when it rings and is answered it is answered by hypes automatic system so please don't let it confuse you because they change phone system systems if you punch seven it'll say you're now being transferred to senior services and that will go to my office so if i'm not there leave a message um, and i will be glad to return your call anything else or questions i can answer are there any questions okay thank you very right. much Nancy. you're welcome Next item is item 6D, the August 31st, 2017 Revenue and Expenditure Report. Receiving file, Mayor. Thank you. Item 6E is a memo from the Police Chief regarding the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police accreditation process. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Good evening. I'm uh, very excited about this. Um, recently, the uh, Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police had introduced an accreditation program for Michigan law enforcement agencies. Basically, what that is is that uh, allows um, uh, police departments here in the state to examine their internal policies and procedures to be sure that we meet or exceed the standards that the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police has set for us. Uh, right now, the Wayne Police Department, we do need to go through our policies, update our policies. It's a very good time to do this uh, right now. Um, so. So basically, I would like, as a chief, I want to move forward with this uh, with this accreditation. Um, just a little brief, hi little brief uh, history about the accreditation. I'll bring in uh, Chief Rosso from the Michigan Association Chiefs. Please give a brief presentation of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, it's a two-year process uh, that we need to go through um, to update our policies and procedures. The cost is eighteen hundred dollars um, initial cost at the application fee, with a seven hundred dollar yearly continuation fee once that accreditation is met. So that's something we could budget annually into our police department budget uh, moving forward. Um, also. Uh, there is a policy management program. There are three companies that um, are associated with the Chief, Michigan Associated Chiefs of Police for this accreditation process. One of them is PMAM. Uh, and basically what that is, it's a, it's a process that will move our paper policy manual to a, a, a digital format and also help with the accreditation process with uh, bringing our proofs into there when we come to the final accreditation approval. Um, all that information will be stored in this one database. Okay. Um, I have also have Sergeant Andy McKay with me. He's going to be the accreditation manager and is going to head this project up for me. Um, so I wanted to have him uh, present as well. Uh, but right now I wanted to introduce uh, retired police chief Neil Rosso. Um, he's retired chief of Flat Rock and he's currently the director of professional development accreditation for the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police. And he'll have to give a brief uh, presentation on the accreditation process and any okay. questions you may have. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mayor and Council, I want to thank you for allowing me to do this. Uh, Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police is very excited about this program. Uh, what we discovered in the post-Ferguson uh, 21st century policing era is that uh, we need to create standards for the police departments that uh, we, our membership uh, were leading. Uh, so in 2015, we started the process. Uh, the Commission of 11 was actually appointed in uh, June of 2016. Uh, there's six police chiefs from all over the state and five police-related uh, members as well. Uh, accreditation for policing uh, has been around since 1979, not in the state, but nationally. Uh, the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Associations or Agencies was created in 1979 with the International Associations of Chiefs of Police, National Sheriff's Association, uh, Police Executive Research Forum, and, and the uh, Noble, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, and they sat down in 1979 as a result of some things that were going on in the, the 60s and 70s with American policing, uh, similar to the 21st Century Policing Report, and decided that we need to create standards for professional mm -hmm. law enforcement. Uh, we, we went to New Jersey. They had a uh, plan in place, so we, we took their standards and modeled them. We have 105 standards. Uh, they, they cover administrative function, uh, the personnel function, the operation or the field function, the investigative function, and how we handle arrestees and detainees. Um, the, the goal of our accreditation is, is multi-purposed. Uh, one, it is to 
take those standards that are representing uh, current modern professional police uh, practices. It will reduce litigation. Now, anecdotally, I can tell you that I worked for Port Huron Police. We are nationally accredited, and it saved us uh, a lot of lawsuits. We would get a, an inquiry uh, on a lawsuit, and they would never sue us. Uh, the national accreditation has a lot of data on that, and New Jersey does as well. And I think the, uh, the Michigan risk management people are also uh, on board and understand the, the advantages of doing that improve the delivery of police services in our state and one of the biggest advantages of accreditation is that it keeps those police chiefs and their their uh, organization in their personnel and their policies constantly uh, because of the the, uh, the process itself is voluntary uh, briefly what happens is you apply uh, you have two years to complete your first on-site accreditation and you take those 105 standards uh, you weave your policies and procedures or written directives through that and then uh, after the two years or year and a half, whatever it is, uh, two assessors, police professionals from another part of the state will come in and put their stamp of approval on, on the agency itself. Uh, the on-site will be published. Uh, the, the two assessors will come from an area other than this. Uh, and uh, I think that's the biggest change, and I think that's why the risk management people are on board, because they can put out sample policies and they can say you need these sample policies but they have no way of, of knowing whether they're you're in compliance with those and that's what Michigan accreditation will do uh, so I could go on forever about it and I'm glad that all these people showed up to learn about Michigan law enforcement accreditation <laughs> so am I. I was surprised but it's a, it's a progressive town I can see that mm -hmm. any questions of me yeah. and it's very affordable questions? Mayor Rowe, I, yes. I do have a few questions. I do have a few questions. Yes, sir. Thank you for attending this evening. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, it is our pleasure as well. Uh, this Once this um, application of, of, of accreditation mm -hmm. uh, is complete, and then there's an ongoing fee, yearly fee, what does that um, kind of, uh, I want to say, entail the ability of for our police department year after year following the initial accreditation? Um, is it opens up some doors for us for more enhancement? Does it reduce our reliabilities in the future, per, per se, policy costs? Or I'm just trying to see uh, what our benefits are after we get accredited and then we continue on with the membership. Does that help answer? Yeah, one, one of the biggest benefits is intangible, right? It, 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 I, I can't tell you how many lawsuits it will prevent you from having. Uh, but the, the price is reasonable. Uh, CLIA is about, uh, the national accreditation process is about $11,000, $12,000 uh, a year. Mm -hmm. And our goal was to, to get beyond that. Uh, the original fee of, I think it's $1,800 for you guys, uh, that kind of front loads all the administrative services and all the administrative fees for that first on-site. Uh, because when the assessors come here, they're on the MACP's dime. And, and that front loads that. So what the, the annual continuation fee does, and, and we lower that instead of bumping you another $1,800 or a little bit more, is it allows you to budget a lower fee on an annual basis. Uh, the, the advantage of accreditation, I, I could really go on forever about it, uh, because it, 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 it is where modern policing needs to go. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is uh, MACP, Michigan Associated Chiefs, decided to create our own standards before the legislators or someone else created those standards for us. So uh, the advantage is that you, they, they need to stay in their policies and procedures. I, I've, I went to Flat Rock as a, as a new police chief, as an outsider, and my goal was to go through all my policies and, and rewrite them. And, and that quickly went down the drain when things happen every day and you have to address it. Uh, so they'll, they'll be required to do an annual report every year uh, to send to, to uh, the Michigan Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission. Uh, and they'll have to furnish annual reports on use of force, police pursuits, uh, citizens' complaints, and foot pursuits. And so that, that's what that money's for. It kind of, it front loads the administrative costs and, and the on-site itself, the cost of the on-site, and the certificate uh, that we'll present here in 18 months, I hope. All right, Did I answer your question? Uh, kind of, but uh, my understanding is that by having this continued membership is that in a way like my own home insurance, if I have an alarm system or I have some other uh, uh, things on there, I'm lowering my um, yearly insurance costs. Um, is that sort of kind of by having this certificate of our police department for our insurance uh, liabilities? 
y you're MMRMA, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. MMRMA is going to help fund it uh, annually. I think uh, Chief said 50 percent, and so that will that will lower that. Uh, and I think eventually, uh, the the more police agencies in the state become accredited, the mm -hmm. the risk management people are going to see that the accredited agencies are costing them less money. Uh, okay. The 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 okay. annual fee is 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 purely to the Michigan Associated Chiefs to operate the system itself. Uh, not it has nothing to do with with, with uh, your risk management lower like premiums mm -hmm. at no. this time. But but it, it in the long run, it, when you talk to New Jersey and Tennessee and Florida, it it has drastically reduced uh, to the point where uh, city manager will go to a conference and her department's accredited and someone else's isn't. Uh, the city manager from the city that doesn't have a department of credit will come back and say, hey, why, why aren't we doing this? So I, I give uh, Wayne and the chief credit for jumping on it real early. I think that that says a lot for the, the police department and the municipality itself. Mayor, one more question. Yes. And how many communities are currently on board? There, there's 26 that are on board. Uh, one has been accredited. The uh, Rockford Department of Public Safety has 10 police officers, and they got accredited within the first year. The commission was created, created in June of 2016. They got their accreditation in June of 2017. Hmm. Um, but th there's a lot more that are interested in it. I, we've done accreditation manager training probably seven, eight, ten times, somewhere in there. And we've probably had 60 or 70 agencies that have sent people. Uh, but one of the things that I, I pressed on the chief was if you keep trying to get ready, you won't. Mm -hmm. You need to get the clock ticking and, 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 and focus on it. It needs to become a, a focus of your police agency. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you for your Thank time. you very much. Appreciate you coming. Next item is item <coughs> 6F. This is a communication from the city attorney regarding wards. <coughs> Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Sanders. Um, I'd like to move that we make this... Um, to uh, relieve the city attorney from client um, privilege, so if it can be foyable. There's nothing here that's damning, and it's not nothing that it hasn't been distributed before at a previous council meeting back b in 2015. <coughs> I am moving that we make uh, that release the city attorney from this uh, of this document from uh, attorney client privilege. It's a uh, information regarding her findings on the ward system that was um, released to us here but it was also released back in 2015. Is there support? I move to support. Any questions or discussions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion? Yes. Currently, the memo is stamped confidential, and it states it's attorney-client privilege. Release or distribution is prohibited unless approved by the city council. So the city council has approved that it can be released. This is after it was passed by the, the voters, then the city council met. To, with the committee, there was a committee of people formed, and that's that you were yes, and that's what it's about. That and then some other items. Did you wish to say anything, City Attorney? Or? No, no, not okay. unless there's specific questions. Okay. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. <clears throat> and the next item is item 6G. This is a flyer for the 20th annual breakfast with your firefighters on October 7th, 2017. Okay. Any questions? We'll just receive and file. And um, the city manager, you'll place this on our calendar. Okay. Thank you. Then it is. Um, I do want to just give a little more information. Sure, if you can. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, again, it will be breakfast with the firefighters, October seventh, uh, two thousand seventeen. It's going to be from nine a.m. to noon. Uh, the cost is five dollars for adults and uh, children ten and under uh, is three dollars advanced tickets are not necessary 
and also they're accepting donations uh, for the uh, community closet uh, for uh, handicap and physical ability devices. So they're accepting donations of gen gently used shower chairs and wheelchairs also as part of this um, breakfast with the firefighters <coughs> okay. to kind of restock our closet over there. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Please step to the microphone. Kathy Rockwell, I know when you joined the Westland Fire Department, all of our equipment from the Wayne Fire Department, was that the Westland Fire Department? Did we get anything back from them since, you know, all of our wheelchairs and stuff, everything, if you needed one, you had to go over there? Did we get anything back when we kind of split up? Uh, the city manager will look into that and get back with us next council meeting, okay? Thank you. Thank you. The next item is item seven general items for consideration uh, 7a is to approve the purchase of police and fire radios in the amount of thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars ninety seven cents to be paid from a grant from the Ford Motor Company fund move approval support it's been moved by Councilman Reza supported by Councilman uh, Sanders any discussion okay. yes chief yep Good evening again, Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, I recently received a $40,000 grant from the Mo Ford Motor Company Fund. Um, the, the Wayne Rotary helped facilitate um, us being able to, um, to get these funds. And so myself and the fire chief got together, or the, the deputy chief got together, and we looked at how we can allocate these funds to make it both work for, uh, for both of our departments. Um, so with that money, um, I'm going to purchase six Motorola in-car radios. You know, recently mm -hmm. we purchased a lot of port of these new portable radios. Now our in-car radios are starting to fail, and at the end of life, it can't be repaired. So these six will give us a boost and start getting those those uh, new ones up and running. And the fire chief, fire deputy chief, requested three Motorola um, portable radios uh, to help outfit their entire fleet there at the fire department. Mm -hmm. So this is we again we went out uh, for the uh, the quote, and it's under the state contract uh, through Motorola and through Comsource. Um, to come to come out to thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety seven cents. Okay. Are there any questions for the chief? No? Okay. Thank you, chief. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next is added item seven B. This is to approve an agreement with Wayne County to lease space in the police department. Chief. Uh, recently, uh, approximately a couple months ago, Wayne County had approached us uh, regarding looking at some office space for their, their third circuit uh, juvenile court, basically what's called their juvenile or, or child study division or juvenile diversion. Um, so basically what that is, between five and seven employees uh, that work out of the third circuit court um, that need uh, some office space, basically here in Western Wayne County. Um, you're looking at the juvenile diversion. They have a lot of clients from Wayne and Westland that would rather have to drive to Detroit. They're looking for a central location here. Um, so obviously we have space in the police department and that would be our, our Eastern uh, offices here in the building. That was once our undercover office, traffic bureau, um, and where our um, IT is right now. So that whole, um, whole end, and that um, works well. They did a walkthrough with us. Uh, they liked it. Um, so uh, there's, there's obviously this is to be approved with some things to get worked out in the lease. Um, but as I said, right now moving forward, it's, it's. Uh, I think it's good for both of us for the city. It'll generate a little bit of income. It's part of the building. It's not being used right now. So I think it's a win-win for both both sides. Okay. Okay. Um, Chief, what? Yes. Well, I know right now all of our new election equipment is being stored there. What are the plans for that? I think Ms. Mr. Miller, you can answer that as far as the election equipment. I know they're looking for space. Um, we haven't identified location at this right. time. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, will they be getting their own phone system or will they so be tying yeah, into I, ours? So they would be getting their own phone system and um, basically computer lines also. So they'd be separate from our system and that's something we talked about today actually. Okay. Uh, that, that needs to be totally separate from what we have. Okay. Any questions for the chief? I got a couple questions. Yes. Chief, um, how does that deal with security of 
the police department. So everyone uh, that is going to be in there that is um, working out of the third circuit is lean certified. They meet all the requirements to be in the building unescorted. So that was kind of vetted before this process took off. Um, any of the clients that come in and the juveniles or the parents are going to be escorted. Um, so that's not going to be an issue. Uh, we do have that soft interview room up at the front there off the lobby that mm -hmm. they could use also, and that's a secured area. Uh, but there are doors basically in that area that can be secured, so we kind of worked that out, and everything seems to be working just fine with that. So. Okay. My other question was it says conference room space. Is that just that they can have access to it, or what yeah, does that so mean? Yeah, so our, our conference room or basically our multi-purpose room where I hold the community meetings, uh, they would have access to that also to hold meetings and things like that. And that it just that random, won't be an issue. Random. It's just okay. as far as working out the times. So. Okay. Yep. Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Sanders. I don't have a copy of that memo that you're looking at. 7B. No. Thank you. Okay. You give me a minute so I can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mayor on the meantime. <coughs> May I ask, uh, where are they re uh, relocating from? From Detroit. Okay. I'm not sure of the building they're in right now. Okay. I, believe they're I was thinking the one off of Michigan Avenue, but. Yeah, I believe it's it's Detroit. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes. How, um, Chief, how did we get, how did we derive that price? That was something that was worked out um, between our community development director and Wayne County. Okay. Mayor. Yes. Uh, also, Chief, that, that price is for one year, we will renew it every year, or that's going to be in a, in a contract? It's uh, um, right now, tentatively, uh, my recommendation, or not, I'm sorry, they, they recommended for a two-year lease, and that was coming from the county, that was my understanding. Um, but one of the things I suggest is that we need to have some sort of out clause at some point, because if, mm -hmm. you know, we, for some reason, get more police officers or we need that in the building, we need to have mm -hmm. access to that. Okay. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? No. Okay. What's the wish of council? <coughs> Approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Miller. <coughs> Any further discussion? No. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, Keith Butkovich, Second Street. It was never given. What is the price? How much revenue would the city receive either per year or if it's a two-year term? The chief will answer that. So tentatively for a yearly a lease would be $13,216. Is that if it's two years, would it renew at that same rate or is that up for negotiation? So there's a monthly, let me see what it broke down monthly. I don't have the breakdown monthly, but um, so that's what it comes to year. So it would be that per year. It's one twelfth of monthly. Sure. It's not yeah. like if you do From that month, figure. Uh, 1,600 square, 1,652 square feet. Okay. All right. Wish of council. All in, we have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. The next item <coughs> is citizens' comments or requests for items not on the agenda. I would like to remind uh, everyone to please step forward, state your name and address. Um, and you have three minutes. Well, my name is Alfred Brock. I'm going to state my, uh, I live in the city of Wayne, though I, I don't need to. I understand. As the business economy staggers along, we have seen some glimmers of success and opportunity right here in Wayne. Work with big data, manufacturing, jobs, and finance. Almost everyone is doing their part. Communications were going to be open with marketing agencies and the customer service arm of a large entertainment corporation to help with our local image, and we narrowly missed a chance with a local energy generation company uh, just across the road in Canton. We have had a very serious uh, image problem, however, presented recently by remarks written by a council member. Please take into account that some of the potential business contacts mentioned, UAW members, Wayne retirees, Ford personnel, and many listening now have family and friends, business contacts in the state of Florida. This is from Alfred Brock to the City of Wayne City Council. Remarks regarding the writings produced by the City of Wayne, Michigan Council Person Christopher Sanders prior to the monumental destruction of life and personal property from Hurricane Irma over the state of Florida. On September 10, 2017, I came into possession of remarks made by City Council Person Christopher Sanders on Facebook. The remarks concerned the possible fate of Americans in the paths of Hurricane Irma. He stated, 
or wrote, Hurricanes are not like tornadoes or earthquakes where people, whereby people have little, if any, time to prepare. Conversely, people have at least a week or two to prepare and take cover. I have absolutely no sympathy for any regular resident of Florida that might be killed as a result of Hurricane Irma. You know, Katrina was different. It hit a primarily indigent area where its residents had not resources to get out. Not so with Irma. A sad storage, storage of affairs when protecting your things is far more important than protecting yourself for both self-preservation and for your loved ones. Sad indictment on the side society in which we lived. When informed by another person that hurricanes are unpredictable and there are many reasons why people might have to stay, like my friend who is a nurse and stayed with her patients, City Council Sanders countered with, I understand full well these things. Obviously the financial aspect I understand as you read above. However, moreover, I was referring to the many people they just interviewed on the, n the news now from Miami, whereby most reports said we're going to be a direct <laughs> hit at the time and the Florida Keys, anyway you look at it, stupid idiots. The irresponsible remarks you have now heard not only have a human impact, they have a business impact. Good, Good morning, Mayor. Good, Good evening, Council. Um, this room is full of people that were expecting some kind of discussion or resolution on this ward system. I think you caught everybody but off guard. Quite possibly, we were we were mistaken. Uh, so I have a question: where, where are we going with this? Are you just going to you going to do something about it? You going to ignore it? You going to has it been just shoved under the rug now? It appears that it has been. It's up to council if they wish to have a committee set up to uh, <coughs> then work towards putting something on the ballot to make any changes to the implementation of the ward system. I, I disagree respectively because it's not council's, if council wants to put something on the ballot, that's fine. But this ward system was put on the ballot. It was voted for on the city by the city residents, and it was approved overwhelmingly. It was implemented incorrectly. We all know it. Why is this council not going to do something about it? You don't put it on the ballot to ask the question a second time. That's not how this works. Mr. Webster asked for an explanation. He didn't get one. I'm sure he still is pretty much uninformed about this. And we were under the impression that when it got sent to um, the attorneys that sh they were going to come back and we were going to have a discussion about this. Now you've upset this city and the citizens time and time and time again. This is probably the one chance you may have of doing something right in the city. The one chance you may have of doing what we want you to do. And you're telling me that well, it's just up to uh, the council if they want to put it back on the ballot. You do not get to re-ask a question of the voters. It's not how it works. The voters overwhelmingly approved this ward system. It was clear what the ward system meant. It was clear how it was supposed to be implemented. Mm -hmm. We all know, everybody in this room that knows anything about it knows it was not implemented properly. It is behoven, it is up to this council to correct it. Now, I sat back and didn't challenge this in court, thinking that it was going to be. It was a mistake. If you don't, I will. I will challenge this in court. Now, if you want to incur more legal, or more legal expenses, go right ahead. But by God, this ward system needs to be implemented properly. You need to do something about the fact that it was not and follow the law. Thank you. Thank you. How are you, Mr. City James? Council, I will give my name because I want everybody to know who the heck I am. <laughs> my name is Vern Amos and I live on Stellwagen. Thank you. I'd like to personally, for my wife and I both, to thank the fire department for their response to my home the last week that possibly saved my wife and I's life. I had a carbon monoxide failure 
and ADT notified the fire department. In the past, I've had detectors that failed and I had to cut the wire to shut it off. This time, unfortunately, it did work and it did save our lives because the fire department did show up. So we'd like to thank them personally. Second of all, and the reason why I gave my name and the street that I live on, is I am the one that foiled the email of one individual that sits on this council. I did so on my own actions, not by anybody calling me or dropping a name or a hint or anything of that nature. I did so because the night after the appointment, there was a concert in the park mm -hmm. and the mayor approached me and had a discussion with me that upset me dramatically about what was what she did say and from that discussion I assumed that there was more to it so I tried to research and I had to FOIA asking for any communication that the mayor had the the day before or the day after the vote and unfortunately I did get something back I was hoping not to get anything back so it was not done for political reasons I have no political agenda I'm not trying to sabotage the mayor and I wish people would just stop attacking people on Facebook over this issue mm -hmm. thank you thank you yes mr. Blackwell We, the sovereign people, have unalienable rights given to us by the Almighty God, the Creator. This is not only endorsed by the United States Constitution, but the Constitution of the State of Michigan as well. I rise tonight as your sovereign, also known as one of the negative noise people. By the way, these negative no noise people have spoken to the city council through the ballot box on several occasions, and now I speak to you about the rule of law. Please understand that no government ordained or established our charter. It was we the people, the sovereign, who were responsible for establishing this government. Just to set the tempo of this dissertation, I will be citing the City of Wayne's Charter and Black's Law Dictionary. No one on this council is qualified to define any words, so don't bother. We have reference books for that purpose. Now comes the preamble of the City of Wayne Charter. We, the people of the City of Wayne, County of Wayne, State of Michigan, pursuant to the authority granted by the Constitution and statutes of the State of Michigan, do hereby ordain and establish this charter for the City of Wayne, State of Michigan. Reasonable time in all cases where provision is made, the definition, for an act to be done or notice to be given within a reasonable time, it shall be deemed to mean such time only as may be necessary for the prompt performance of such act or the giving of such notice, shall and may shall is mandatory may is permissive under according to Black's Law Dictionary reasonable is fit and appropriate to the end in view not immoderate or excessive and I cite Cass versus State 124 Texas all government meetings are open to the public and reserve a public comment time for citizen commentary on issue on issues the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals explained in its 1990 decision, White v. City of Norwalk, citizens have an enormous First Amendment interest in directing speech about public issues to those whom govern their city. These meetings, particularly the public comment period, are, the ver are at the very least a limited public forum during which free speech rights receive heightened protection. White versus City of Norwalk. There is considerable latitude afforded to local governments in establishing rules for the conduct of public meetings. A city or town 
may develop a comprehensive set of rules governing council procedures to suit its individual needs or it may adopt by reference Mayor, formalized rules right. such as Robert's Rules of Order. I'm sorry, Mr. Blackwell, your three minutes are up. Rules adopted by local government Mr. Will Blackwell, be valid your as three long minutes as they do not are up. Please upon take a seat. Constitutional rights. Mr. Blackwell, please take a seat. Pursuant to Mr. the Blackwell, Act, 12 will you please take a seat? I'm exercising. Mr. Black Blackwell, state, sit down. State laws, man, mayor. Mr. Blackwell, Briefly, please let, sit down. We're not going to go through this again. I, I don't want to either. And I'm please sit down. I'm explaining the rule of law to you. Gentlemen, we will take a recess again until order can be restored. And I will hold the podium until you get back. Please.
We will be reconvening. Mr. Blackwell, if you continue to stand and repeat your verbiage, we will take another recess. You are in disturbing and disrupting the city's business meeting, and you will be preventing other people from speaking. Because if I come back out and you're still there, we will then adjourn the meeting. I'm not afraid because I have the Constitution to protect my Constitution. We will adjourn again. We will go into recess. Everybody, please leave the dais. We are going into recess. I disagree with the recess. I, I understand what you're saying, but a recess has to have a motion, has to have a second, has to be voted on. I can call for a recess according to the city attorney. Okay. I'll recess right here. We all give our time to it. Will you please all take a seat? Mr. Blackwell, please take a seat. Mr. Blackwell, I have. Madam Mayor, a motion to adjourn. Is there support? Motion to adjourn. Is there a support? No, I don't. I don't. Not when, it's be, not when our business meeting is being disrupted. We allow three minutes and that is it. Everybody knows this. If you don't like that, I am sorry. But we allow three minutes and now it is being disruptive to us to control and run the business meeting of this city. This is not a free for all. This is the city's business meeting. So Mr. Blackwell, I am asking you for the last time, please take a seat. I am exercising my right under the Open Meetings Act. Is there a the second? Law to my is motion? the law, Madam Mayor. Just like the last well, time when I was here, two police officers were dispatched to City okay. Hall for exercising my constitutionally protected keep on right. Going. Thank you. I appreciate that. Just keep that. on going. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, 12.263, paragraph 5, a person shall be permitted to address a meeting of a public body under the under the rules established and recorded by the public body the legislature or house of legislature may provide by rule that the right to address may be limited 
to prescribe times at hearings and committee meetings only. This is a council meeting. It's not a hearing. It's not a committee meeting. We the people are the masters of this city and therefore of the council members and anyone else hired by the council members. This does not exclude the city manager, the city police, nor the city attorney. I therefore, met, I therefore am directing the city manager to fulfill the codified duty of said city manager, section 6.10, to see that all laws and ordinances are enforced. I am requiring any police officer to perform their legal duties to properly arrest anyone who is guilty of violating any city ordinance or state statute, but not to interfere with any of the people who are exercising their constitutionally protected rights. It should, be, it should not be my responsibility to tell a sworn police officer what my constitutionally protected rights are. However, if it becomes necessary, I certainly can and will let them know what my rights are if it becomes necessary. If you don't know your rights, you don't have any. I know mine. <coughs> Having cited the issue of the Open Meetings Act, let me state further, there will be no purpose nor authority for your timer unless you are intent upon serving up three-minute eggs. Sovereignty, according to Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, the supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable power by which any independent state is governed. And I cite Spooner versus McConnell. The sovereignty of a state does not reside in the persons who fill right different now. departments of its government, but in the people from whom yeah. The government, Madam Mayor, motion to adjourn. Emanate it, and they, the people, may change it. Sovereignty, then, in this country, abides with its constituency, not with the agent. Exercising a constitutionally protected right cannot be converted into a crime, and be arrested for it. Sanders, Miller versus United States. The claim and exercise of the constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Sharar versus Cullen. There can be no sanction or penalty opposed upon one because of this exercise of constitutional rights. I am sure that speaking at an open council meet at an open council meeting is not an unprotected constitutional right, nor can it be construed as disorderly conduct nor disturbing the peace. Check the legal definitions of disturbing the peace and disorder. Okay, Mr. Conduct. Blackwell, I gave you another I three have, minutes. And Will I'm you very please comfortable sit in down? In my knowledge of these legal issues, I'll be back to make Mr. more Blackwell, positive noise. Much to your gentlemen, chagrin. we are going into recess. This is finished, the final Madam time. Mayor, that was it. We are I'm going finished. into recess. He's done. He's done. Is there anyone else who wish to speak this evening? Yes, sir. And you have three minutes. Good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. My name is Robert Webb. I've been a resident of the City of Wayne for over 65 years. I retired from Ford Motor Company with 38.2 years. I'm still paying my local 900 union dues for the rest of my life. And I come here today the first time to make you aware of Rosie the Riveter mm -hmm. and the project that the Yankee Air Museum has got going on. And I'd like to uh, read this poster for those people that are sitting at home watching us on TV. Rosie World Record, calling all Rosies. Help Yankee Air Museum bring the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest gathering of Rosie the Riveters back to Michigan. Date, Saturday, October 14, 2017. Schedule, 9 a.m., doors open. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., games, prizes, and fun for all. 11 a.m., the world record count begins. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., live entertainment. 1 p.m., official Guinness photo. Location, Eastern Michigan University's Co-Vacation Center, 799 North Hewitt Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Free and fun for all. Celebrate with the largest gathering of original Rosies since World War II. 
register online at yankeeairmuseum.org forward slash Rosie dash world dash record. There's rules and regulations that have to be followed to uh, get a Guinness Book of World Records. Mm -hmm. And if you go on that right. website, they'll give you all the information of the clothes and things that a real World War II Rosie would wear. Mm -hmm. My mother was a longtime resident of the city of Wayne. She passed away a year and a half ago. <clears throat> One of her last wishes was to see the Willow Run be turned into a world-class museum. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to help and ask everybody else to help me make her wish come true. Okay, and could you give us the date again and time? The date and time is Saturday, October 14th, 2017. And I have a few more seconds left. I'd like to let everybody know to um, come by and visit the Wayne Historical Museum. They've done a lot of cleaning up and fixing the ex um, exhibits. Um, they, they got people working there that knows all about the mm -hmm. history of Wayne. And I was at their um, Stinson airplane uh, program they had at the library last a little while ago. It was the most informative uh, speech I've ever seen. The man knew everything there was about Stinson aircraft. Also, I got to meet... Um, oh, my time's up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Mayor, could you just ask the, the date, the time, and the location of that... Um, Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. It's at Eastern Michigan University's co Vacation Center in Ypsilanti, Michigan, Saturday, October 14th, 2017. Men and women are both allowed to uh, enter this contest. And um, there, like I said, there's rules and regulations that you have to follow. Okay. Sorry about the extra time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Next resident. Yes, Mr. Vansu. Brian Vansu, Hubbard Street. Um, I got an answer from a couple of you on an email about uh, the contract of our, our city manager. I'd like to ask Mr. Miller and Mr. Sanders, how do you expect our city manager to work in such a vile, hostile environment with the threat of constantly over her head to lose her job. That's why most of these people are here to find out why you constantly are trying to push her out of here. Can you answer that for us? Why did you decide to put it on the, the agenda and then take it back off? Do you really want to lose our city manager yet again? Please. Do we want to go back to city manager of the month where they can collect their six month severance pay after they decide to leave after a month? She's done more for this community than any of you sitting up there. And she doesn't even live here. You have nothing to say for yourself? What have you done for this community but sit up there and make bad choices? What about you, Mr. Sanders? You've embarrassed this community. Mayoral. This is citizens' oh, no. comments. I'm this talking. is citizens' comments. I'm talking about you. You pulled it off the agenda. You planned on firing our city manager. Can you explain why? You told no one why. No, you didn't. I didn't put it on there. No, Mr. and Miller, we, this you is an your answer. time. I'm asking a question from council. This why? is your why, time. Mr. Miller, can you answer that? I am not answering any questions at this time. <laughs> Mr. Sanders, how about you, why, do you want, why do you want our city manager gone? Can you answer that? Can you tell the people of Wayne why? Mr. Ivansu, you are being disruptive. I'm just not disruptive. I'm asking yes, a it question. Is. It's a question. Will you please continue with your conversation? We will not answer questions. I will give you another you 30 seconds. To remove her. I want to know why. Ask them after the meeting. You have how many more I seconds? I already know that one Mr. Minute. Porter, you have one minute. Mr. Racy doesn't want her gone. Mr. Webster, what is your feeling? I'd be happy to talk to you after the meeting. So we're going to sit here and play games with our city manager, our future, our lives, our businesses, and our homes while you all play games with us. That's what you're going to do? We're trying to run a no, business you're meeting. You're not. Yes, you're we are. You're playing games with us. No, we aren't. Are we going to see this on the council and the agenda next meeting? Is that what we're going to do? You're going to push it off? If you do, we see it I will be again. happy we'll to speak with you after the meeting, this. Mr. Avancu. Make sure we can keep our city manager. Mr. Avancu, I will speak you. with you after the meeting.
Len Fisher, Winifred Street. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening. I'm, I'm here to address the state of affairs of this council as it relates to the city of the state of the city. In my opinion, and I want that, it's all my opinion, mm -hmm. in recent days the behavior of this body has gone from frustrating to infuriating and embarrassing. Although behavior of which I speak seems to center around one councilman, I feel that the entire council is to blame. Since the defeat of the tax increase that would have not only been a mistake to enforce, but would have caused some of the citizens to lose their homes, it has become, it has appeared that the council has thumbed its nose at its citizens in favor of their own agendas. And then comes the outlandish and unacceptable behaviors. Reports of misbehavior in neighboring communities, too much time spent on trash can placement, uh, supposed Facebook messages that no one's seen, special meetings to coerce members to attend, uh, questionable council vacancy appointments, and of late, the gavel-banging recesses. All of you are guilty because perhaps you don't belong to the questionable voting block, but you sit by and either play the victim or refuse to publicly denounce these shenanigans. Many of us are hoping that the recall language will be approved to serve as a wake-up call to you and to the city that a group of concerned citizens for a better Wayne are watching and have had enough. Step up and lead, please, with integrity that you were elected to do so, or step aside and allow those who are willing to, to lead. We are standing here ready to fill those vacancies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Anyone else? Yeah, Jim, and over there. Yes, Ms. Lloyd Allen. Good evening, Mr. Allen. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council. I'm Lloyd Allen, Ward 3, Precinct 3, City of Wayne. Uh, even th this rumor of her job being threatened, you know, I, I think we need to understand one thing. First of all, this lady has not cost this city one dime yet. Not one dime. She got one grant for $340,000. We haven't paid her that much. I've been kicking around this city 50 years. She's the best i ever seen. Now she's showing Main, Main Street how they can get grants. Mm -hmm. We should have more like her and a fewer less of you. Thank you. Hi, Ed Marmon from the Wayne Library Board. I was hiding out there to, to stay out of the crossfire. <laughs> um, I just a really quick reminder about uh, the library. Friends of the library are um, uh, donate or um, dedicating uh, a room to Paulette Medvecki, our late director. Uh, Six forty-five tomorrow. Um, it'll be short, um, and there's going to be more cookies than I can possibly eat. <laughs> So um, come on over and help eat some cookies. Okay. And that's it. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Ray, and I'm from Westland. And I will stand behind people in Wayne here because I know Lisa. She has gone to the city of Westland. She has brought grants, and you have done a good job. Mm -hmm. I am very sorry to hear some tonight that they want to fire you. I hope they don't. You're doing a good job in my eyes, too. I came over here to advocate for you. And the fire department, I'm, I'm jumping to something else. And also, I saw this on video that you hitting that gavel like three, four. It does look kind of... Well, everyone's professional. I, I can understand people sometimes can go over three minutes. But the way you were hitting that gavel all the time, people were talking about that. And I saw you on Facebook, the picture, and they were talking about you having a meeting. I didn't want to go to that meeting because I know you're doing a good job. Anyway, the fire department's having a uh, pancakes October 7th from 9 to 12, and I'm planning on being there. I also keep bringing up about mental health. Mental health is very important. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect anybody in any way. We'll have to remember we should all work together. Not Anyway, the citizens put you up there. I tell the city of Westland the same thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for the people. You people wouldn't have jobs. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes.
Good evening, Madam Mayor, Good City evening. Council. I'd like to thank uh, Brian Avanchu, who spoke earlier. Uh, he represented the city last week at the Michigan Municipal League. Yes. I believe you and Lisa were there. Yes. Uh, I was proud that they represented our city through for the bicycle club. As was I. Uh, although they didn't win, uh, I think we as a community can be very proud of all of them in the bicycle club and the job that you and Lisa did for them. Thank you. Uh, Brian asked some questions earlier that the council didn't want to answer, but it's pretty obvious from the audience that uh, it takes four votes to make changes in the city. And with Mr. Gabriel gone, there's not four votes to remove the city manager. So this should be a, a, a call out for the citizens of this community to come to every meeting because there'll be seven council members at possibly the next meeting and that would be on the agenda. And if we want to save Lisa's job, we need to show the, our support for her to be here and to question the decisions that the council's making. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, good evening. Keith Butkovich uh, uh, on 2nd Street. Uh, during the first recess, I noticed that four council people, well, three and the mayor, went inside the council chambers. My question, it was brought up a little bit earlier, but I worry that that may violate the Open Meetings Act, and I want to state that Councilman Racy and Porter were here, did not partake in that, but it just, if, if, even if it does, it looks bad. We separated. But I, but they were in the uh, chamber. I mean, I just wanted to make sure that I know there's going to be a legal opinion in two weeks, uh, as my understanding from earlier. But it, it just, but it looks bad. You can see how the perception could be that people may think that something's going on back there. My next question has to do with the three minutes. Now, if someone asks a question and a council person or somebody answers it, does that stop the clock? Or does the minute keep running? Like if I ask a 20 second question, someone could talk up here for three minutes and then I'm shut, I'm done. I mean, what's, what, is there official ruling on that? Or is it by discretion or based on person or what? There is no, I mean, there has to be a policy. Doesn't anyone have a policy? Mr. Bukovic, I will tell you, I have been trying to, when it's a simple answer to a simple question, I will answer, but it's not enough. The people do not understand that this is a business meeting. You have your three minutes, we have our three minutes. So any questions that you have, we will address at the next council meeting. And in the future, you have now relegated any, I guess you could say, any niceness that I will have in the future. You will have your three minutes. Oh. Uh, folks, Are you running for election? I mean, that's, that looks really bad. It's I really will cool. give you your three minutes, and we will have our three minutes. Well, I've lost about 30 seconds already. You can have another minute. Can you please give him another minute? <laughs> well, I just wanted to clarify, because there have been questions about that. And I mean, I, and I do want to say that when you stated that we're not answering any questions, and you're speaking for the whole body, I think that is rude. I mean, if you don't want to answer questions, that's fine. But if a council member or the city manager or whomever wants to, you should allow them to have that right to speak. I mean, it, it, and it looks bad, too. I mean, if 247 WJR, WWJ, whoever came in out here and reported this, the city of Wayne look, would look really bad on the 10 or 11 o'clock news. And we, yes, we want to get our name out there and get the city, want people here and all that, but we don't want them out in this matter that seeing a council fight. I remember how the counts in the city of Warren used to be, where they were arguing and there may have even been fist fights. I can't remember. I don't want to get to that, okay? I mean, that would look really bad. Yes, you'd get on the news. Wayne would get out there. Great, but that's not the way I want it. And I just want, please, council, remember, most of you on here were elected by the voters. Two were appointed, as we know. Just remember that we can put you up there. We can get you out. Yes, Ms. Rockwell. Uh, Kathy Rockwell. Good evening. Good evening. 
Uh, thank you, Lisa, for all that you've done for our city. I think you're one of the best uh, managers we've ever had. And I wouldn't blame you if you walked away. I'd be running a long time ago because I wouldn't take this crap. Excuse my French. <laughs> uh, last week, mm -hmm. you had put something on the I on your, from your iPhone, and you called us. Uh, you last really week, didn't get it, and we still don't get it. I think that was oh, an insult my not email. only to us, the citizens that vote a no or yes, but an insult to. Uh, the East Point people and also the Hazel Park because the East Point people turned it down and it wouldn't have mattered if we all voted yes, we wouldn't have still been able to pass it. Uh, also, uh, the citizens supported the police <coughs> department and the fire department. It wasn't that we had anything against the citizens. It was just the fact that it was 18 mills, 14 mills for 18 years, which seemed like an awful long time. I'll be here 60 years the 15th day of January. And I just couldn't afford it, and the other people that made this citizen, this people pride and progress in the city mm -hmm. are the older citizens that brought it to where we're at now. Uh, you said in your message on your iPhone uh, that you wouldn't have voted anybody in that was against s'mores. Mm -hmm. In your interviews to the candidates that were here, mm -hmm. there was not a question asked. Yes, there was. Uh, if they voted for Sparsa or was against it. How did you come to the point of saying that you elected somebody that was not, that didn't vote against Sparsa? How do you know how Mr. Weber, Webster voted? Were you in the booth with him? Uh, also, the people are were really upset. You wonder why the mill age didn't pass. A lot of things that the committee and some people said were not true. We weren't all stupid. We knew that the emergency matter wasn't going to be called in the next day if it failed. Uh, I know a lot of people in politics and checked it out, and they said it had to go through a ritual. Uh, and you just, like, threaten people. And that's why the millage didn't pass. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Higgs. We haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. There's good reason for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can watch this at home and fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my question. I think it would help if we had a legal opinion as to the enforcement of what three-minute rule. And if it's part of the charter, it's the law, and how do we enforce it? Because there's a lot of wasted time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Dave Cook, I live with Wayne Towers. I was I seen uh, ex mayor. He was complaining about his building get damaged mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. I just want to know. Well, I talked to him about the grading. He said it's, it's up to you guys. I said no. I was in Wayne City, and they said since you're a, a commissioner, that's your responsible about the grading. He didn't care about that. He was worried about his building. And as soon as they messed it up. How come nobody has been working on that building since he, he was down there? They stopped and that was it. And that's why they have nobody for over a week now. Anybody know why? Does he got that much power? Even though he's an ex Wayne mayor, he can shut down a, a building being tear down or completed? Nobody knows nothing? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Is there anyone else before Mr. Amos speaks that has not spoken? Okay, Ye yes, Ms. Ms. Borgi. Lynn Borgia, Flora Lane. Uh, Kathy beats me by a few years. Um, I've lived here 56 years, mm -hmm. and I echo her and others regarding our city manager, our current city manager. I'm appalled and disgusted by the behavior of you, Mayor, and several other council people. I'm embarrassed. I've lived here my entire life. I've never seen such behavior and such dirty dealings as I've ever seen up until this election and with the people that are currently on this board. You sit there smugly, Tony Miller, talking about ethics and integrity. Let's talk about ethics and integrity. 
because you're soon going to find out, just like you, Chris Sanders, you know more than anybody else as you right there blindly in the sky, knowing every dirty dealing that you've ever done. You're a disgusting individual. I can't even call you a human being. For the turmoil and the discussion, but no, it's my three minutes. You're, but I will not tolerate you. I won't tolerate you anymore. I won't, I'm embarrassed that, I, that you're a member of my parish that I go to. I'm embarrassed. You, you think that you're a good human being? You've done nothing but dirty dealings and destruction, as well as you, Tony Miller, and as well as this. I can't even call him an individual. Thank you, Mayor and City Council, for granting me more time. You're welcome. I'd just like to publicly um, announce that Kathy uh, Rockwell has a birthday coming up this month, and I'd like to <laughs> wish her a happy birthday. And I have another question. Um, it was mentioned at the last council meeting about real estate being sold, that six properties were listed, mm -hmm. and hopefully by this council meeting there would be more announcement and I'd like some kind of clarification on why that wasn't on the agenda again this time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? In the back? Okay. Um, I'd like to echo what a few other people have said. Uh, that there are many in this community who are thankful to our city manager and all the hard work she's done, all the grant money that she's pulled, and uh, just in general, all the, the businesses that she's helped attract to the city. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Yes. Oh, I'm s Mr. Powell, um, Victor. Time. Good afternoon, Osborne. How are you? How are you good? I'm doing fine. I'm studying the clock first. Make sure. Who makes that clock, by the way? Do, is this a is this a standard clock or what? Okay, that's uh, for for the next meeting because you know everybody has a regulatory type of piece of equipment that needs to be adjusted. But so, for Mr. Blackburn, maybe that piece of equipment needs to be readjusted. Uh, back to my question is, I wanted to know the information and get the progress report. I didn't hear any about that building on Michigan Avenue on the north side that w has asbestos mm -hmm. in it. Um, I saw the workers there and monitored and, and took care of them for 45 minutes. No progress, no work. It was going down. I talked to somebody else. They don't want to do it because they're scared of you guys, but I'm not. Is uh, We've got this place called the alley, uh, whatever. You're, you've got lights and seats over there. That's real nice. Uh, that's a nice deplorable area. You can barely drive through through Newburg, through Newberry Apartments, and on to the next one. We got all those bars, and that's our property, as I understand, for parking, right off curb. So if you do a time study or, or just a, a patrol study, there's a lot of people there on wheelchairs, okay, electronic motorized wheelchairs, and they don't have the prerogative to get out of somebody's <coughs> way who's uh, you know, road rage, okay? So pedestrian traffic, and it needs to be marked properly. I, so that's something new on the agenda, but you haven't followed up on, on that building. I know a, a little bit about that building because when we did one of our first cleanups, I believe Mr. Porter was there as a citizen also. And a lady came up to me, she says, you're the lead worker. And she says, take a look at this. And there it was. There was this building with masking tape across it. But it had, of course, I always look for those things. It had a work order on it, posted work order, 1998. 
and you can see all the black debris and mold and everything. So it needs to be taken care of. And so Trapper's Alley is down in that area, the asbestos buildings down there. So we need to have somebody take a look at that. I, I would have pleased you uh, send back. And uh, from Mr. Queen from the DPW, would you please report back to us how our uh, recycling uh, section is going? I try to get in there, but you got a whole bunch of blocks. Countdown for Wayne Rocks now. <laughs> Lenny Powell, uh, High Road. <coughs> First thing is we need to look at the logo behind you guys that says People Pride and Progress. Um, I do have a fundraiser for the fire department September 28th at Chili's in Canton mm -hmm. all day long. And then um, I'm putting together a huge chili cook-off at Hype. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's invited to enter it. The forms are out here. They're and then we got, um, I'll make it real short, um, the Halloween walk. Mm -hmm. um, last year we were cut off at 1,750 people. It's going to be over 2,000 people this year. Um, I'm bringing in five food trucks and Bless you. extra policing, sheriffs, and that. And I'll let it go at that. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. My name is David Steinauer. I'm on the DDA board. Mm -hmm. uh, I also own a business here in Wayne. And just to echo the, the good things that are happening here in Wayne and the momentum that we've had, I've not seen since coming back to this area to work. Um, and, and I think it's exciting and, and I think it's great. I think some of the things that are going on as a business person is disheartening. I've talked to local business people and you hear them and you say what can happen on this on the city council and this divide that's happening is hurting it's hurting people coming in it's hurting people staying i can tell you there are conversations of people why do we want to stay here and and the conversation goes back to listen it's working it's coming back the concerts in the park fantastic mm -hmm. uh, some of the other things but this divide going on i don't know what has to happen whether the closed meetings not a good idea i guess um but you guys getting together and figuring this out is something you have to do i cannot understand the hatred for some of you and the hatred between you i i just don't understand that when things are starting to turn how can things be so bad um and some of you not even listening uh right now which i don't understand either um <laughs> And, and so I appreciate all of you. Uh, some of you have gotten back to me. I've talked to you, and I appreciate you talking to me personally about your thoughts on the city. Um, and, and I appreciate you, this job you're doing. It's not easy. I understand that. Um, but I do appreciate what's happening and the things that are turning here in Wayne. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Steinauer. Is there anyone, <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there anyone else? Okay, move the agenda. Is item eight items for the next agenda? Are there any <coughs> items for the next agenda? Madam Mayor. Councilman Sanders. I'd like to uh, put again the ward issue on the agenda as I thought it was going to be on this agenda. Um, um, and direct, ask the council, direct the city attorney to this, the same question that we asked last time to, to uh, give us a laundry list of issues where in the charter. Um, the word issue we might have to address by um, a vote of the people on the 2018 election to fully implement correctly the word issue. Okay. Mayor, if I may. Yes. My opinion on that issue, I think aptly addressed it. Um, I would be happy to explain it and have individual meetings with council members. Uh, the language as approved by the voters as presented to the Attorney General's office, as then reviewed by the committee, and as then implemented by council at each step of the process, the language itself there was adequate and there were no changes. So I guess I need further clarification what council means when they talk about changes to the charter. Uh, at this point, 
the ward system as approved by the attorney general's office has been implemented there is no further revisions to the charter needed in order to properly properly implement the system so i don't understand i guess the breadth of the question because at the conclusion that i came to as you were all aware and you waived the privilege on was that there were no changes at any point in the language the attorney general's office pointed out ambiguity and asked that those ambiguities in the implementation process be addressed. Those ambiguities were then taken to the committee that was formed on this issue. Mm -hmm. The committee addressed and made recommendations to the council at the time. Council accepted and voted to implement pursuant to those recommendations. It's, it's a final matter. I don't understand why council is asking me to review charter there is no further revisions. The conclusion that I came to as I communicated to all of you are there are no further revisions needed to our charter in order to implement the ward system. So I, I feel like I would be repeating myself mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I understand that we wait until the next meeting to answer questions, but what I don't want is two weeks to go by to me to get, for me to give the same answer <coughs> that I've already given and then we have a frustrated body and frustrated citizens. Um, the analysis I gave was that there are no further revisions to charter necessary to implement the ward system as approved at every stage in the process. There were four stages that I addressed. The first was the ballot initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I provided a sample ballot from Mr. Roberts with the language. The next step was the Attorney General's office and the approval of that language and his communication and his concerns uh, about a lack of or, or the ambiguity. The next step is the language was approved by the Attorney General's office and sent to the committee. There were questions about implementation that the committee addressed. It came out of committee. Committee then make, made recommendations to the City Council on how the ward system should be implemented. City Council adopted those recommendations and passed a resolution. I provided a copy of that resolution. A side-by-side -side analysis of every step in the process shows that the language itself did not change. Now. Is City Council now saying, and, and this is maybe where I need clarification, is City Council now saying, well, that language wasn't specific enough or we didn't like what the committee decided, so therefore we want to change the committee's recommendations? Because the committee's recommendations were made after the Attorney General pointed out ambiguities and Council adopted those recommendations. Mm -hmm. So my legal opinion that I provided was that there are no changes in the, in the um, language at any step in the process. Substantively, uh, the uh, language of the ballot initiative remained unchanged. Okay. So I need, I need clarification because I don't want two weeks to go by and then us come back to an audience that expects answers and obviously a council that expects answers when I, I don't understand what else council wants me to look at. I guess my conclusion would be that no further revisions to charter are necessary to implement the ward system as approved by the voters, as approved by the Attorney General, and as passed by this council at a resolution in order to implement same. Okay, Councilman Sanders, do you have specific areas? Yeah, I, I guess I would ask if I would submit um, several questions to the mayor, could you forward that on the city attorney and have them respond to the entire council? Yes. Because some of the questions that we had brought up at the last meeting were um, or some of the concerns that some of us brought up at the last meeting were that um, and we have two of the members that solicited the, the petitions here in the audience today Mr. Roberts and Mr. Borgi and what the intent was got lost in the mix and I understand that's not your your firm's fault and I get that right but they're expecting answers and this is something that's been going on because I believe though I, although I'm not a lawyer I believe that had as Mr. Roberts said that had he um, challenged it in court what the intent was all the surrounding evidence of what people were told about what this would do is not what the end result was and so therefore I personally don't just want a council resolution I believe this needs to go to the vote of the people, not changing the word issue because that's uh, the citizens have it has to be fully Im implemented. However, the how the people are elected instead so, because the resolution of council was that the entire city votes for the each board's candidate that sort of thing. Those are the meaty issues that I'm thinking of that we need to discuss. So let me clarify. 
Um, at, that was one of the ambiguities that was raised by the absolutely. Attorney General's office. Absolutely. The Attorney General's office pointed out the fact that the language itself was not did not address that issue, mm -hmm. and therefore that would require uh, clarification in the implementation process. Right. Now, however, I will say this, that the amb if I might, Mayor, I apologize. Um, the ambiguity was in the the language on the ballot for sure. However, the ambiguity was not there in the actual petition. And the explanation to voters from all major news sources that voters have access to. And so therefore, the ambiguity is got lost in, you know, I guess, you know, the, as the old movie says, lost in translation from where the petition was to where the what went on the ballot. I'm not disagreeing that with what uh, what on the ballot that the council did, I guess the best that they thought that they could do at the time based on what was on the ballot, right? But I guess I'll just I guess if we can move it for dis put it on the ballot of the the council uh, for discussion, I will compose an email to you, Mayor, okay. over the next couple days, and if you can forward that to the council, I, actually I'll I'll email it to you and tag the entire council. Yeah, and then if you'll forward it on to the city ma or the um, city attorney, I'd appreciate it. It, it sounds, Mayor, I'm just going to yeah. clarify while we can, because it sounds to me like the question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, whether or not council can take an act now that somehow retroactively changes the implementation of the ward system. That's not what I'm saying. To account for a different type of voting within the district. No. Yeah, well, yes, but I'm not saying retroactively because it is what it is, and we, we have to elect the people in four, five, and six the same way that one, two, and three were elected at large, correct? However, what I'm suggesting is that those are issues that we need to address one way or the other and let the people of Wayne decide. So your question is, moving forward, how can we, if whether we can, by an act of council, change the detail of the vote within the district, meaning people within the district directly elect who represents them in the district. That was one of the things that we, I thought that the council should, should have conversation about for sure. And then if you remember correctly, when Mayor Haddis, even though this is not <coughs> the council or this is not the ward issue, but to going along with that, which sort of ties in when Mayor Haddis left, we, because we have a separate entity now, now we have a, a elected mayor it's not just one of the council people. I mean, she is, but she's not, or he or she is, is, but she's not. I believe that at the time that the mayor had us left, because there's no provision in the charter, Mayor Pro Tem cannot just be willy-nilly selected as the new mayor, because it, the charter, as I read it, specifically states that the mayor is different office than that of council because they're four-year terms versus two-year terms. And I believe we had a, a, a crisis of the charter, so to speak. And I think that needs to be addressed as well. And the people need to decide whether they um, want to, what would happen in that issue. Basically, I'm asking for, in that, with regard to elections and that sort of thing, clean up the charter a little bit. Like, should there be a special election for a mayor if the mayor, <coughs> or do we need to point out that the mayor pro tem, and then there's a appointment to council, but that's not specifically stated in the council <coughs> or in the, in the charter. I would I would be happy to accept an email clarifying. Okay. I've taken notes as well. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, I, I got a couple things. Yes. Uh, first off, I just want to let. Um, Councilman Sanders, no. My email is J R H A E S A at cityofwayne.com. For some reason, I don't get emails from you or my name spelled wrong when you send stuff to me. So please t write that down J R H A E S A at cityofwayne.com. Um, and then my, my second thing is I'd like to put on the agenda what the hell are we going to do about saving this city? Because this is getting ridiculous. The people here in this community want to know. Is that all, Councilman Lucy? Yes, that, that, that's, that's a big yes. Does anyone else have anything for the next agenda? No? Okay. okay. The next item is item nine, consent calendar. There are two items before you. Move that exception, Mayor. 
Could somebody support? Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, city manager, are there any staff reports? Mayor, there was just a question last week from uh, Victor Osborne. I'm gonna, if you would allow it to have the city attorney address the FOIA issue questions yes. that were brought to our attention. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. So Mr. Osborne asked uh, last week about FOIA. He had asked who the FOIA coordinator was. I would like to point out that the city of Wayne does have a FOIA policy pursuant to state law. That FOIA policy is available on the city of Wayne website. Um, so I will refer to that in answering the questions. Um, we have designated the Wayne city manager as our FOIA coordinator. However, he or she is authorized, authorized to designate uh, staff within the city as her designee to handle them. So if you submit a FOIA to the Wayne Police Department, she has designated Lieutenant Ryan Strong as her FOIA coordinator at the Wayne Police Department relative to those materials. Any other matters, uh, Carrie Venus here at the city has been designated her FOIA coordinator. In addition, a FOIA matter, uh, depending on the nature of the, the exemptions that may be applicable, are also handled by my office. The next question that Mr. Osborne has is how much information can the FOIA coordinator remove and whose decision is that? Um, I would then point to uh, the statute. Unfortunately, there's too many for me to go through here uh, in a public meeting. However, under the FOIA Act, which is MCL 15.243, there are subsections A through W, X, Y, there are a through Y on, on potential exemptions. It is a very unique legal matter. Um, so if the exemptions rise beyond that, uh, that either Lieutenant Strong or Miss Venus is comfortable dealing with, then those matters are forwarded to my office and our office decides whether or not matters are exempt under the act. And if they are, the information is exempt, then we are required to redact the information to the extent possible. Um, and the third question was, how long does the city have to respond to a FOIA request? Pursuant to the act that I cited, the city has five business days uh, to respond to a FOIA, and we also have the opportunity to grant an additional 10 business day extension. The date of the five days and when it starts ticking is dependent upon the method of delivery. Personal delivery is treated different than email and is treated different than fax. Um, but in general, we have the ability to take up to 15 business days to respond to a FOIA request, depending on the nature of the request, the number of documents involved, the amount of time that it takes to collect the documents themselves, and the amount of time that it takes to review the documents to ensure that none of those exemptions that I just mentioned to you are applicable. And those, I believe, were all of, of the questions. Thank you. How much is the cost per piece of paper that you charge? That is listed in the policy as well. <laughs> you didn't ask that last time, so off the top of my head. But I would direct everyone who has questions about FOIA, please visit the city website because we are required to have a policy and it's required to be made available to the public. Thank you. Anything else? Just one more item. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brita. Appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to let the public know, and, and I want you to be the eyes on this project as well, but DTE did let me know that the grant that we did receive um, for over $300,000, uh, the LED conversion is complete. Um, I did ask DTE due to some complaints that I received um, to do a night patrol basically and uh, uh, go around the city at night and make sure that the lights were on and if there were any issues to assure that they are on and we have no problems. However, if you do see one of the new lights out, I would respectfully ask that you contact either the DTE or you contact the DT DPW department because we definitely want to make sure that um, you know the cost savings are coming through and that this uh, conversion is complete 100%. So um, I want to thank DT for uh, their diligence. Uh, they had stated that they probably have it done by October, November, so they had it done uh, actually in record time. So, but please, again, if you see any of those lights out, report it to uh, DPW or to DT, or you can always contact me in my office. Um, I do appreciate that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Next item. These are comments from the members of the City Council. Councilman Porter. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, heard some comments out there tonight that council is not saying anything about the people here on council. And I feel that's a good thing. 
I think that most everybody knows how I vote and they know how everybody on this council votes so it's pretty easy to know where we stand uh, I have to work with these people we have to keep this city running one way or another whether we have every councilman for it or we have the three three and one up in the air split or what we have we have to continue to work and as Mr. Racy said we have bigger fish to fry than this constant bickering that we're going through we need to get this financial situation under control as I mentioned last week the last council meeting that's what I'm dedicating myself to I'm not going to sit up here and cut down anybody on this council I'm not going to cut down any of the citizens you elected me I'm here to represent you and I think most of you have, have that have contacted me have been halfway satisfied with the results you've got from what I've done that's all I had to say thank you thank you Mr. Webster Councilman Webster thank you for not forgetting me this week um, first thing I just I, I want to point out because our, our police our fire our DPW a lot of the workers in the city um, they get a lot of grief sometimes and we kind of forget um, to, to really appreciate them so just on behalf of me and yeah on behalf of a lot of the citizens thank you for everything that you do um, pretty much everyone that's here is here because they want to be here it's easy for people just to run off when things get hard and a lot of people around here have had to sacrifice and give up a lot of things and we don't acknowledge that enough so uh, chief thank you for what you do <laughs> Carrie Matt Lisa Brita thank you because I mean it's it's not easy and there's a lot of stuff that we're dealing with and it you know it would be a lot easier just to throw our hands up and go somewhere else and not have to deal with some of the grief that's going on um, in terms of some of the strife that's going on up here the questions about Lisa questions about council you know we need to get past this we need to do what we need to do um, so as far as the questions go about oh who's on what side or is Lisa staying or is she going let's just end it right here and I can tell everybody at least is staying that's the way it's gonna be and we're all gonna move forward together one way or another thank you councilman racing I uh, thank you mayor um, I want to thank everybody for coming out to t tonight um, I, I, I really appreciate you being here and uh, t having t taking interest in our community and, uh, and a passion for our community because um, to me the soul of our community is at stake and we need people to come to our meetings and pay attention to what's going on because we cannot have lose our city manager it's very important to keep stability in this community um, people are looking at our community and we need to try to keep the stability here and it's very disheartening when there's all this this strife and, and turmoil going on it's very difficult for her to work it's very difficult for our staff to work and it's very difficult for the citizens of our community I got a call from an 80 year old citizen that was that watched the meeting on on, on uh, a cable and she was so upset didn't understand what was going on I had to, it took me 20 minutes to explain it to her she's very upset with this council and the way that the, the behavior that's happening up here and we need to get past this and start working for the citizens of this community that elected us or that were or if you were appointed by this council this city needs leadership and the city the, the citizens expect that I expect that as, as a resident and I know these people expect it also so please can we figure out how to save this community work on those things all this other stuff is just frivolous if we're dead in at the end of in the, at the end of this uh, this uh, fin fiscal year we need to be working on solutions um, because th that's not becoming th the top priority anymore all we're dealing with is all this crazy crap and it's got to stop please let's stop and let's do what the citizens want and, f and figure out how to make the city great again thank you councilman Sanders nothing, nothing. Okay. mayor pro tem Miller thank you 
I'm going to address tonight some of the, quote, crazy crap we're talking about this evening. Um, okay. I've been watching. I've been listening. I've seen. I've heard. Just not from one source, but many sources. I am under oath and a, and a confidence of responsibility to uphold it. Reference to individuals' character, ability, or orientation on this council or in this community is unacceptable. Zero tolerance of any employment of any place that we work at. I expect the same from the same employees of this community as a taxpayer. My character is not going to be questioned because I am not of the fold. It is zero acceptable. It is very difficult for me to be here, come up here, sit with these individuals, knowing that how they feel about certain things in our community. This is not who Wayne is. This is supposed to be an inclusive community, not an exclusive community. Is that who we really are, taking sides? I would hope not. But obviously, tonight's display was clearly evident. I totally disagree with some of you, because perhaps maybe you don't see or hear all the things that I have been. And it takes no pleasure and joy knowing, I assure you. I didn't come on this council to deal with this kind of crap. OK? Let me make that clear. And it's just not that as well. So that's why I'm, not sta I'm standing for that. It's not about Christopher Sanders. It is about Lisa Norrisini and the conduct that I have been seen, shown, and witnessed. And I cannot close a blind eye to it. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're not getting the picture of the big picture of things that are occurring that I have seen. So that is my explanation where I stand on things. And if that's what you all wanted to hear this evening, I am providing it with you and to you. If this council wants to entertain the idea, and I do mean entertain the idea of a liability by endorsing, enabling these behaviors, you are doing so. And that is my comment for tonight. Thank you. It isn't a secret that the city of Wayne is facing its worst financial crisis in its entire history. When I became your mayor, I didn't take the challenge lightly. Having served on the council prior, I did see the numbers, and I knew that there was a possibility we could be heading down a path of insolvency at some point. I just didn't know when. When David Murphy, the former city manager, hired Plant Moran to work on the city's finances, excuse me, Their work provided the city with a clear picture of just how bleak the future was going to be. As your mayor, I have met with the State of Michigan Department of Treasury and asked for funding alternatives. I am not naive to the fact that the residents turned down two millages and I was seeking out ways to identify new revenue sources. Unfortunately, without a revenue source, there wasn't anywhere to cut any further and a revenue source had to be identified. Plant Moran has told us that, the auditors have told us that, and the State of Michigan, the Department of Treasury has told us that. When I brought SMARSA to the city manager's attention, we fought with the state to change the language so that we didn't have to ask the same question that Hazel Park and East Point had requested, or I'm sorry, the same amount that Hazel Park and East Point had requested. Unfortunately, they were unwilling to help. Well, I realize <clears throat> that 14 mills is a lot to ask the residents. We did pass a resolution stating that the city would roll back to the amount needed if we could show a 20% general fund surplus. The residents spoke, and that wasn't enough to earn their vote, or in this case, their trust. To respond to why I stated that I would not support anyone for the council appointment that did not support the millage, I'd like to explain my position. Personally, I do not have an issue with anyone here in the city of Wayne. But as the mayor, I was told by the state 
Plant Moran, and the city auditors that Wayne needed a revenue source. And we still do. We need it badly. My reasoning behind not supporting someone who did not support SMORSA was because the city needs to look at all options with the situation we are in. Even today, after SMORSA failed, the city still needs to find a source of revenue to stay alive. Folks, we are on life support right now. Mr. Smith, who has been quite vocal against me, had made it clear to the council when he interviewed twice that he would not support any type of millage or tax increase. When you're appointed or you sit on the council, you're here and you have to look and have an open mind and look at everything. You may not like taxes, but if that's going to keep the lights on and the police in the police station and the firemen in the fire department, you may have to make that choice and vote that way. If you're coming up here and saying you're not even open to considering it, why would I want that person up here? I ask you that. Think about it. Why? We're the fiscal stewards of this city, and we must have an open mind when it comes to identifying new sources of revenue. Everything has to be considered, and many of the candidates made it clear that a millage they would never support. Fair enough, and I thank you for that honesty, but we as a council have to at least consider all the options available, and that simply wasn't going to be possible for many of those candidates. I apologize to anyone who may have been offended by my statement, but I am your mayor, and I have to re represent the interests of 17,500 people, and I have never wavered from that fact. I am always going to be truthful and honest, and sometimes that truthfulness and honesty has gotten me into hot water. As another example, Ford Motor Company was upset with me when I was asked by a reporter recently how the new investment of the Wayne plant will impact, impact the city's general fund. I answered honestly and truthfully, it won't. Because it won't, folks. That improvement is all inside the plant. There is no more personal property tax. We do not get any money for anything that Ford Motor Company puts in that plant. The only way we get money into our general fund is through brick and mortar. New buildings, new development. <coughs> I ask you to give me the same courtesy that I did give to you. And that is the problem. We have lacked courtesy. Thank you for your time and for allowing me my time to address your comments and your concerns. If you would like to speak to me further, you can contact me personally. I don't do Facebook. I'm not into that. I will meet with you anywhere, and I will talk with you. So all of you have a very nice evening, and God bless America and this city of Wayne. Motion move to adjourn. To adjourn. Support. All in favor? Aye. Um, What's it called? Building, um.